Well, let's stay on that subject of our impact on the environment, because the head of the UN is saying the world is facing an oceans emergency and more must be done urgently to protect the marine environment. Oceans cover nearly 70% of the Earth's surface, providing food and jobs for billions of people. But the seas are unregulated, with no legal framework in place to protect them. And this week, the United Nations is holding a conference in Portugal, uh, pushing for an international agreement on protecting the world's oceans. So to talk about that challenge, I'm joined by Martin Kurig, who's head of the World Ocean Initiative at Economist Impact. Martin, a very warm welcome to the programme. So Thank it you. sounds like an enormous challenge the UN is taking on, getting some sort of global agreement on protection of the oceans. What are they talking about this week? Yes, you're absolutely right. This is such an important week. I mean, the uh, the ocean has been neglected, really. I mean, out of sight, out of, out of mind, really. Even though, as you highlighted, it actually provides food uh, to 3.5 billion people, 120 million people are directly uh, employed in fisheries, aquaculture and ocean sectors. There's huge economic opportunity. Um, and, you know, the uh, leaders, I mean, more than 7,000 people will be you know, are gathering here in Lisbon. I'm in, I'm in Lisbon here and meeting the ocean community in person again. And you can sense there is a sense of optimism because you know, recently, for example, the you know the WTO, uh, WTO, the World Trade Organization, adopted you know the, these measures to, um, to to curb you know harmful uh, subsidies for fisheries, and also the Plastics Treaty, the, the UN Plastics Treaty, was adopted in, in March. So there is momentum, and building on this momentum is really important because the high seas, as you highlighted, are currently unregulated. About you know 1.2 percent of the high seas are currently regulated. So there's real need, but also real momentum that we can sense here. So it's good, it's good to hear there's momentum. We are very aware of the, the need. I mean, you say out of sight, out of mind. Actually, uh, the, the issue of plastics in our oceans has been very much at the forefront uh, for, for several years now. And so action has been taken from that perspective. But in terms of how you get governments or businesses to uh, police or, or take proactive action to clean our oceans, I mean, how, how does that work? What does that look like? What is really important is to highlight uh, the opportunity here to build a sustainable ocean economy. That's what we are doing here at the Economist Impacts World Ocean uh, Initiative, highlighting the economic opportunity, for example, from aquaculture. I mean, food could provide more than six times as much. You know, the aquaculture and, and food from the seas could provide more than six times as much food as it currently does in sustainable ways. For example, seaweed. There's also, you know, um, responsibly sourced fish farms. Also, the um, energy opportunity. I mean, we have an energy crisis at the moment. You know, the ocean can actually provide 40 times more energy than it does today. Floating wind farms, for example, wave, tide. We haven't really harnessed this opportunity properly. And this is an opportunity to talk about this, to bring business together with finance, with leaders. And the finance opportunity that we are particularly passionate about here at the, at the World Ocean Initiative is enormous. There, there are going to be lots of new announcements on blue bonds, for example, blue finance mechanisms. There's lots of opportunity that hasn't been harnessed yet. All right. Well, Martin, I get your enthusiasm and uh, your excitement about this. And we wish you all the best there in terms of coming up with global solutions. It's much needed. Martin Keurig there, who is uh, from the World Ocean Initiative Economic impact. Thank you for your coming.